What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to take a look at the two new Scream 6 TV spots that released yesterday. I think through unlisted videos, uh, they're spreading around as advertisements as well. They're racking up the views. They're racking up the views, and they're very good. Okay, now, there is a couple things we need to talk about. I will say, I guess, going through my head of, like, the, the checklist of what was shown, not too many spoilers, I would say. We get a little bit more context, I would say. That's kind of the idea of these TV spots. And we also have a very interesting little tidbit from Viewer Anon, who talks talked about in these TV spots, or at least one of them, they actually use CGI to cover up, to put a ghost face mask on someone that didn't have it on in that scene. So people are kind of going through which is it. You look at this one that's kind of right behind me. That one, I believe, is at the bodega. I don't think that's the one. I do think I have an idea of who it could be, and we'll talk about it. Well, you know, let's just kind of start there. Let's start with the Tara hanging thing. So a couple things, right? We do know she's falling. So so the whole upside down thing completely puts a bed forever, right? So she's about to fall and they finally answered my kind of age old question. Why is it such a big deal that Sam would let go of her when Sam is about to be flung from there in like a scene or two, right? That's what I had always said. It didn't really make sense to me. Do you pull Tara up? W what do you do? Well, now we see in this new TV spot that there's actually a ghost face underneath her ready to... I don't think you can see anything in their hands, but there's definitely a ghost face standing there basically just waiting for Tara to fall. So now it makes a lot more sense, right? You don't want her to fall, but there's also a ghost face coming up for Sam. So you got 1v1, 1v1, and you got to do something about it. Now, honestly, that's kind of the scene that I think the, the killer doesn't have the mask on. It's just a guess. It could be wrong. But I think it makes sense to be that scene, considering this is very late in the movie. I don't know how late, but you do have Sam's arm, right? That's always the biggest indicator, I would argue, of how far you are in the movie. Is 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 her arm cut or not, right? Because when they're first going back to back with Ghostface, her arm's fine. And then when she's holding Tara, arms, you know, there's a cut to it. When she's holding the gun and the projectors behind her, when she tilts her head, all those scenes, uh, you know, her arm was slow. Lit. So that's like the very tail end. This is somewhere maybe right before that. So it is possible at this point Ghostface has already revealed themselves. So that was just an interesting thing. Speaking of Tara, let's go to Chad and Tara. So we had heard rumors that Chad was going to be kind of a low key, like the heart of this movie, that he was going to be the heart of the movie. And Hearing that, it's like, well, that's cool. He's like, how is that going to play out? Are they going to do something with like him and live? Right? Are they going to kind of have him have remorse? And, and by the way, I still hope they do. I don't know what they're doing uh, with him and Tara. The rumor is they aren't together actively. Uh, which is kind of almost like a Tara Amber kind of thing, right? There was always the idea that those two were together, but then, you know, in the movie, they just didn't do it. Uh, and now in this one, you can clearly see, right, when they're all kind of standing there in the line, right? Chad, Tara, Mindy, Anika, and Sam. You see Chad grabbing Tara's arm. And I would imagine it's something romantic. And if they're not together now, then maybe they, they hooked up really fast right after the events. Of I, I don't necessarily know, but... It does, I think, help Chad's character because now, and to be honest with you, now it gives Chad a whole new layer of depth because if he's going to kind of be this protector role over specifically Tara and a boyfriend-girlfriend kind of thing, well, we already see some pretty interesting scenes with him throughout the whole film, namely at the end, beating up Ghostface, kind of like throwing him right with the uh, the stab mask behind him. But now, in this one, or in one of these two TV spots, we get an additional scene, which is Tara screaming very, very sad. And this is towards that end again, right? You can tell just by their hair, by the, the sweat uh, you know, spray that they have on them, like all that stuff. You know this is later, okay? And she is screaming. She's being held back by Sam. So I don't think it's a stretch to say she's watching somebody she cares about getting attacked or dying. Is it Chad? Is that Chad? I think it could be. And I think a death with Chad now or at the end of this movie would probably have way more weight to it than, well, I thought like three weeks ago for one, but also, you know, way more weight compared to, say, the ending of Scream 5. Okay, so we see that. We also see a body bag. So the body bag is interesting, right? Who is it? Now, it's on... It's on, like, pavement 
I I want to say it's the fall of the apartment of when they're crawling. I, I would assume it's Anika's body. That's just my assumption. I don't know that. Uh, it could be Chad's. It could be, I guess, anybody's. But I feel like, I'll just make like that guess right now, it could be Anika. We have Liana Liberato's character, which is interesting. So two scenes that kind of go along with this, right? So you see them all kind of together, right? They're having their couch scene. And pretty much everybody's there. You can even see Jack Champion. The only people that aren't there, like Josh Segura's not there. Obviously, Dermot Mulroney, Kirby, Gale, all them. But like the young cast, the new group, is all sitting there. And there's a little misdirection there. I don't know if they're going for misdirection. You just have to look at their clothing items, right? So like Anika's clothing item is very, very different than what she's going to be wearing with that apartment chase when, you know, they're going to have to go across the ladder. So it's not the same scene. They get a phone call, all that jazz. If you look at Liana, though, her outfit is the same outfit that in a different point in the TV spot when Ghostface goes up to that uh, you know door and you can kind of see Ghostface through the glass and then you see a stabbing thing through the door, you see the exact same shirt. So, and by the way, by the way, these are all incredibly small moments, quick moments. I, I feel like I'm always pretty transparent, but some people I think just literally don't get it or don't watch these videos. I know at this point we're doing it to ourselves. I think we're all kind of aware that if we're going to go this deep into looking at her little like rainbow polka dot whatever shirt and matching it with when Ghostface stabs through a door, I get that we're doing it to ourselves. I'm not I'm not blaming the movie for that, but it, you know that is something. And I do have to go back to Dermot Mulroney's you know interview over the summer in which he talked about, you know, his daughter's a victim. And I really want that to not be, I mean, we do know because their last name, Bailey, we know they are father-daughter. I was hoping he was talking about a Scream 4 character. I still think it's possible. I still think maybe he had a daughter, you know, left, uh, got divorced, whatever, was with somebody else and had Liana. But at this point, it certainly seems like Liana's character is going to get it probably in the first third, and that's what's going to bring Dermot Mulroney's character in, Detective Bailey, and then maybe Kirby comes from that, right? Like, I imagine that's how it's going to go. I don't know that for sure. You have to first establish the characters and establish, you know, why they're friends, who even are they, right? You got to do that first, but that's just something to kind of throw out there as well. A couple other things to note, the carp and I saw this on Twitter, the Carpenter sisters are not messing around. You have Sam, well, I think we all saw a little while ago, Sam's got a brick in her hand during that back-to-back -back thing with the ghost face. Sam's not messing around. You have Sam hitting ghost face across the face with a, a book. You have Tara, right? A lot of splicing, a lot of jumping scenes when they're talking about luring them in and then, you know, like eliminating the threat, let's say. Uh, there's a couple cuts there you also know that Tara's on the phone. There is a voice, depending on if that voice is supposed to be in that scene, but that is Dermot Mulroney. I think enough people have listened to it and heard it and know his voice to know that that's the thing. So it's possible. And we've already seen that scene, right? When they're all kind of all around in the police precinct and they're talking about, you know, setting a trap and Tara's got the phone. I, I do think it's possible that that's who she's talking to is, is Detective Bailey. And, uh, and it makes sense. I mean, it could just be a cut line from somewhere else in the movie they're injecting in, but it does make sense. And then when she says that, they show a scene where she's stabbing down with a knife. Now, that does look to be towards the end of the movie, but I don't think she's messed up enough for it to be the end. In fact, there's a specific picture or frame of Tara where she looks probably at her worst, like her most worn out, most beaten up. And she's looking off, and the jacket looks like Kirby's, but a lot of people are saying maybe it's Sam's hair, whatever it may be. It could be one of the final scenes, again, of the entire film, which is potentially a positive because that can mean that Tara survives. I don't know because, you know, judging their looks of how beaten up they are and how far along, you know what I mean? It's tough to know for sure. But I will say when she's stabbing down, is she killing somebody? I really, I honestly don't think so. I don't think she's eliminating someone in that scene. I don't think it's like far enough in for that to happen. We also see Ghostface mask on the ground again with the uh, the kind of the, the flashing lights. Now that one, here's the thing. We've talked about the whole Ghostface mask on the ground and Sam picking it up. I think they're two different things for whatever reason. I don't know if it's the exact same thing. Sam, we've talked about it when she picks up the mask and it's got her jacket. I just think 
Maybe the first one is maybe towards the bodega side of the movie. And then the Sam thing is literally still uh, one of the final shots of the entire film. And I guess one final thing just to throw it in. There's a, a scene where it's just Mindy's face and she just looks like petrified, like terrified. I, I assume that's the Anika thing, whether she falls at that. But here's the thing. She's kind of looking like straight on. So I really, it's possible, again, we do the ladder thing. And then Ghostface pulls Anika in, stabs her. Maybe he's, he then throws her out the window. You know, like, you don't have to keep her in the room. I, I don't know how that's going to play out. But when Mindy is just having this face of, like, you know, bye. You know, when she has that face, she definitely... I don't know, if the character fell and she was dropping, you think Mindy would be kind of looking down when she's looking straight. So I, I, I feel like it's when Ghostface pulls, uh, pulls Anika in, if that even happens, right? But there you go. Those, those are some of the scenes. I know there's maybe a few others, but the ones I really wanted to focus in on, mainly even that Chad Tara thing. That, that one to me is super, super interesting. The Ghostface now waiting for Tara to fall. That one is super interesting. So how do you get out of that situation? Well, honestly, I think you let Tara go and then just have them, you know, hope that I guess Ghostface doesn't stab her on the way down, and then they just fight. I, I really don't know how you get out of that situation, but I'm sure we'll find out in the movie. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure you guys are subscribed, bell icon turned on, and I hope to see you all on the next one.